and welcome to episode six of You've Been a Great Help. I can't believe we're up to episode six, sorry, this is mental to think that. Just to keep people aware, if you are watching new, uh, I'm Brandon, I'm your host of the show. I've got a load of different people coming on to talk about a lot of different things and I'm in a completely new space. So normally, I'm sat in my lovely little spare home back home with my lovely big microphone and whatnot. Uh, this week, I'm home. I'm back in Northern Ireland. So I'm in my old bedroom. Uh, yes, if you like it, it is a joker saying welcome to the madhouse. I can never see anything more obvious and a TARDIS wardrobe, which let's be honest, sums me up perfectly. Uh, what's gonna be happening on tonight's show? I've got three new guests as always, with three new challenges as always. They're gonna be talking about what they've been up to in lockdown, what they're gonna be up to. And I think we're gonna get a little bit political and talk about the arts and theater, what's going on at this moment in time. It's definitely going to get a bit fun on that end. But first, are you all right? Are you doing well? Have you shared the thing yet? Have you put it out there saying the show is happening? Because you really should to let people know this is all going on because it's a pretty great show. And these people deserve your views. I'm just saying. But first up tonight, I have got a lovely guy. I first met him back whenever I was in first year of university and he was directing Chess the Musical. Oh, so long ago now, 2014, 2015, something around then. Uh, since then, he's gone on to be writing his own plays. He's directed in the UK, America. He's written for both of them as well. And he's a dame on his own right, as well as on the stage. Please welcome to my show, Tim MacArthur. Hello, good evening. How are we? London calling. <laughs> oh, welcome. Hello, London. This is the North calling. Can you give us back our theatre, please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How many do you want? I've got a couple here going for grabs. I feel I feel there's a few of us. The Royal Exchange has been told they're letting most people go redundant. So even the North is... The like... National has announced as well they're making redu redundancies. The National Theatre and the Royal Albert Hall has announced that. If you just, just get some money by the end of the year, it's going to be bankrupt. Um, I'm loving the arts at the minute. It's an absolute party. Uh, so how have you been anyway, apart from all that there? How's life? Um, do you know what? It's been, I had, I had a coffee with my friend today, actually, Gary, and we had a conversation about it. And we were talking about lockdown and, and as though like this parts, I think when it first started, everyone was quite, oh my God, what are we going to do? But for me, mm. lockdown has been pretty all right, actually. I've probably done things that I wouldn't have done if I hadn't been in lockdown. And one of the main things is exercise because I've had a tower rail, which is, is an exercise bike really for the past 10 years. And I've actually for the past five weeks been using it. So, and I've lost a stone. So I'm, Ooh. I'm, which I wouldn't have done. Can, can you give me the secrets to that? Because um, I realized yesterday that I've put on 12 stones. Um, so oh, I've lost you. You've frozen a little bit. Tim, come in, Tim. She's frozen. I'll try. I'll try taking you out and in again. We'll see what happens. I feel Tim's Wi-Fi may have just gone down. Um, so I'm going to chat a little bit, see what happens, see how you're all doing. Um, from what Tim was actually telling me before, it means I can fill out his little bit of question. Uh, he has been losing weight, and the best way to do that is watch Netflix. Apparently. It's just to sit there, put on some trash TV. Personally, I like to call it garbage. Garbage TV is the best. You watch Love is Blind, whoa, garbage. Sat there at the start, went, it's awful. Hate this show, couldn't do it. By the end of it, I'm like, what is Jessica the Messica gonna do now? This is stunning. Jessica the Messica I live for. When she fed her dog wine, don't know if I was a big fan of her or not, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to let Chris get his wife out. In fact, um, shall we bring on my second guest and we'll bring Tim back whenever we work it all out. Should we do that? We'll see if we'll see what work out. Uh, if my second guest can be ready and he's prepared and ready for a nice little chat, uh, please welcome to the stage at uh, the soon-to-be best man of my fiance at our wedding, which isn't happening yet, but he may have applied for Don't Tell the Bride, which means we could be getting married a bit sooner than I expected. 13. Oh, Tim's back. Never mind. I will pop introduce him again later i apologize everything's going wibbly tonight this is fun new venue new everything who doesn't love a party hello hello sorry about that i don't it's the power of the internet and the gremlins as they would used to I say was about to open up for alex to come in and bring you back on after him but i felt i'll give you your time anyway well um, if i go again then i apologize do you know what i mean 
fine. But I've got my bars are all up, so hopefully fingers crossed. We'll get we'll get into some questions then, make sure everything goes well. Uh, well, first of all, I want to talk to you. What inspired you going to performing? Because, like I said, you've written um, plays, you've performed in them, you've done many a panto, like you've done nearly and directed, obviously, and in, in nearly every area of the arts. What inspired you to get to that? Um, originally, I wanted to be a bus driver, and then <laughs> um, I know, I know, and then um, my brother actually got interested in theatre before me, so we would go to London and see shows, and then my. Yeah. Um, and then my best friend's grand saw an advert in the Evening Gazette in, in Teesside, where I'm from. And she said, oh, you like theatre. Why don't you go and audition for this? And it was Oliver, 1987. You weren't born then, dear. And, no, um, I not even no, glimpse in my father or mother's eye. I'm probably older than your dad. And, um, and then we, um, we auditioned. And it was one of those things where you had to pay £10 a week, which was obviously you were in, paid to be in the show. And that was it. And I just got the bug. And then throughout all my, you know, senior years at school, I just was involved in loads of different Amdram companies. And then I left Teesside when I was 17 and got into Mount View and that was it. And then so it's been, you know, an interesting journey. Mm. And I think that's one thing lockdown has been. It's made people, I think, very reflective and, and lots of things in their life. I know it has for me anyway. And just re-looking at stuff and, yeah, and it, it's been, you know, I've I've... I've been I've I feel really really lucky because I've done I've always been a yes person so I've had various different careers in the industry and it's not been some of them have not been something that I set out to do but mm -hmm. someone has said to me Tim do you fancy doing your own radio show and I went yeah all right never done it before and, and that's how I got into radio and and cabaret wasn't a question of me wanting to go into cabaret it was a question of one year i wasn't working as much and a friend said to me why don't you get on stage and sing some songs and get casting directors to come and see you and that's how all that started um you know which is amazingly i performed all over the world now We're like you know uh, kl i opened a theater out there south africa in cape town you know i did wow. fine signs 54 below i did I was the first British artist in a theatre in Chicago last year to perform at a new venue out there. So it's it's been, when I look back at my career, things I've done, some of them have, have been areas that I've really not imagined that I would go into. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really interesting journey. And I just hope that, um, oh, I feel like I've Ava Peron. Peron, Peron. Um, I just hope that um, I can get back to doing what I love because... I can't do anything else. All the other jobs I've done that when I haven't been working, I've got sacked from. <laughs> I'm the absolute, see, I mean, I can really understand what you mean. Like you, you sort of just go into areas. Cause for me, I obviously started going, I want to be an actor. I just want to do acting. Like as in like being a straight actor, comedy, great. Suddenly it was like, oh, do you want to do some musical theater? Like, yeah, sure, I'll learn to do that there. And then it was, oh, do you, my mate forced me up to do stand up one night and for it basically says, Oh, they didn't stand up in there. That I said, well, they probably got all their people for tonight. And went, if I asked them, though, will you do it? And I was like, I mean, they're not going to say yes. And he turned, w walked away, came back, and went, you're on last. And I was like, I've never done stand up day in my life. How on earth did like, you do that? Care. That petrifies yeah. me. Oh, how did you do I, that? It's Dutch courage. A few drinks in me, went up. The guy who ran the actual thing turned around to me and went, that's not your first time doing that. I went, it is. And he went, you have, a, you could do this. And I was like, oh, I can do stand up apparently. Which has then led me to presenting things like this and knowing that apparently I can command a room. Did you Wasn't have jokes in your did you have jokes up your sleeve though already that you knew? I just have silly stories. One of them which we will hear later on when we talk to Chris, um, and which I completely acted out on stage on all fours, and uh, we'll get to what that's about later. Um that sounds interesting, dear. It's definitely <laughs> an interesting family show, remember? Family show. Family show. Uh, the priest while i was down there though, so we'll not get back we'll not talk about that no, um, well, i know we're good i know we're good none oh that's true that's true which is exactly one of the things i'd like to talk about while we've got on you on here so you do like you say so many things including a lovely little nun <laughs> this is not the nun i wanted you are not <laughs> the nun i'll get me none give me a sec where's me none here's me none there's me none oh there she is there she is, Sister Mary MacArthur. What a woman! Great legs. What a woman! You've done, you've done between that there, and you've done so many pantos, of which I also have a lovely little taster of. Oh. It's an old one as well that you did, according really? to my research. It's an old one. Here what you are. Oh yeah, the first year I worked for Kudos, that was with lovely Linda Robson and Lauren yeah. Stroud. 
This looks looks lovely, which is it is great because you like you said you've done so many things uh, through it, and you're doing. I think at the moment you're doing your stories with the Dame. Yes, which has been really good. So, so last year, a friend of mine runs this amazing charity called the Toy Project, mm -hmm. and she has this really quirky shop in Archway, and it's like a toy shop that you would not think of if you thought of a toy shop. This is not how your imagination would be. It's like jars of plastic dolls and Lego and games and books and and um, Playmobil people. And I didn't even know that apparently Playmobil people, there's Roman Playmobil people. I don't know if you know that, Brandon, but oh, that was something I discovered. I mean, You've I didn't know anything about that. You go, wow. Yeah. And, um, and so basically I did some storytelling for her in a shop on a Saturday and it was interactive storytellings with a Panto Dame. Mm -hmm. and we did it in the shop and then we went into uh hospitals and children's wards and special needs schools doing interactive storytelling um and then this year because also um the dame performed on the stage in the children's area last year at pride in london so mm -hmm. this year because obviously pride was cancelled um camden council contacted me and said would you do some online dame storytelling interactive storytelling for kids so we've done some classics and then we've done some lgbtq plus stories as well written especially catered for um kids who've got gay parents or lesbian parents so they sort of it's it's it sort of letting them know that it, it's okay and everything is normal it's and everything normal. is fine it's normal it's because they don't have a mum and a dad, which is yeah. absolutely right. I think there's a whole thing where, you know, should kids be taught about LGBT history and stuff in schools? And I absolutely think they should, because you don't, I think, especially where I grew up, you don't know about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. told it's wrong. I mean, I didn't even, because I, for anyone who doesn't know, I am a, a bisexual man, and I didn't know that was an option when I was growing up, because people never told me it was until I hit around 18 and went to England. And went, yeah, that's the thing, and I went, oh, I have more than one option out of this. Now I understand my life a bit more. Because I, yeah, yeah. I think that's a great, fantastic. Um, short little thing for us, though. Uh, in one sentence, could you please sum up how you feel about our current uh, performance crisis? I'm calling it, well, thanks to Matt. He came up with a name. It's called Curtain Down to me. Uh, so we've had Brexit. We've had names like that. I'm calling this Curtain Down. So how do you feel about Curtain Down? Crippling. Crippling. Wow. Um. Oh, I mean, it's. I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm. 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 I. I. I go through emotions on a daily basis, um, on an hourly basis, really. Just the lack of, and it was. It's really interesting because I think it's. I think what has scared me more than anything is, I think, is how. What has been a shock is how I think the general public through this crisis of, of the theatres being closed, how the general public regards the entertainment industry. And it is an industry. You know, yeah. it's not just actors prancing around on stage. There is so much to it. All the people who work backstage, you know, producers, dressers, lighting designers, the crew, the marketing companies, the ushers, the cleaners, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's just like, it's just a vast thing. And I think people do not, and it comes back to a thing when I was growing up and wanted to go into theatre. And I remember seeing a careers advisor and then really not looking at it as it like a proper profession. And mm -hmm. I think the thing that, you know, if you look at, for example, with football, how much people wanted football back. And yeah. yet more people go to the theatre in this country than they go to watch a football game. Yeah, and yet we are faced, and football was one of the first things that came back. All right, without without a, audience. an audience, without an audience, but the government insisted that that was one of the first things that they got back. Now you have to ask why did they do that? Because of whatever reason, morale, sponsorship deals, mm. you know. But theatre brings in more money than football to the economy, and that is a fact. And I, and I think what I'm scared of is the fact of how we have probably been in a bubble and think that people appreciate theatre more than we realise. And to be honest, I don't think they really understand that our industry, and I think a majority of people look at it as a hobby, that we all yeah. just do it because we they think it's a hobby, because they, they can't see the amount of work and dedication, discipline, 
and sacrifice that when you work in the entertainment industry, you actually make. And one example is, you know, Christmas. Look at Christmas. How many actors work at Christmas doing panto? And you work over Christmas. You don't spend time with your family. Now, what other profession, apart from doctors and nurses, which are hugely valuable, obviously, but what other profession really do people work at Christmas? Yeah, that's very true. Part of postal workers, I'll give them that. I'm sure my mum will be watching this. I work at Christmas, and she does. Um, but do you know what I mean? But, there is a very, yeah. if you were to list the amount of people who actually work, and, and that's something that, you know, because we're performers, we're storytellers, we do what we do, we love to do what we do, we want to communicate, we want to tell stories. It's not, it's not a case about having a jolly. You know, we work hard, you know, yeah, and I've no. been doing it for 25 years, and I have worked incredibly hard and made sacrifices, you know, to do what I want to do. And it's not, you know, and, and yes, it's a business and it's an industry and it's not about the money because you yeah. will, you know, you will have the good jobs that pay very well. And then you'll do the jobs that don't pay anything at all. Then you do the jobs that will pay you a little bit, but it's not, it, it's about the That's craft and it's yeah. about well, passion. In, in response to that, I've obviously, I've got a challenge for everyone, um, which brings us to yours. Uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm nervous it, about this very put to people that I work with and that means for you you get a special little challenge where it's around panto funny enough now that you oh, mentioned it. here we go um so what your challenge is going to be is I'm going to give you some anagrams of panto shows and you've got oh. to tell me what they are oh, I'm really bad Have you got this. it yeah oh I'm sure you will be absolutely fine so here comes your first one two words but they are all jumbled up into one thing, but it is two words. If anyone could guess what it is, Sleeping Beauty. Comment. It is Sleeping Beauty. Well done. That was, that was a lot quicker than I expected to get that one. My dyslexia is kicking in. Go on. <laughs> I really have picked a hard thing for you to do. Yeah, yeah. Your next one. Aladdin. Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> He's so sorry, running through every single one in his head. Like, what do I do? I know, do? that's what I'm doing. I'm like, what is that? How many, what's that letter? There we go, number three. I love it of Fizz Rye. It's my favourite. What's, what's got a Z in it? What Pantos have got a Z in it? It's got two in it, obviously. But I know. What Pantos have got? Do you know, I don't know that one. I'm going to kick myself, I aren't I? The answer is the Wizard of Oz. Oh, that's not a panto. I've seen people do panto of the Wizard of Oz. I'll tell you, do you want a bit of a, a showbiz little secret here, which is really funny? I maybe shouldn't what? say that. Um, oh, that's Dick Whittington. It is Dick Whittington. Crikey, you're getting these quicker than I expected now. And here is your final one. Alden Red. I like what a show. Oh no, I'll see the the that gets a thing. Two words. No, no one word actually. Oh. No. No? It's Cinderella. Mm. Oh, of course it is. It's because it was two words. Cinderella. Yeah, I know yeah. I there now. I went, oh, that doesn't make it as easy as usual. They're very good. Well, thank you. Uh, so thank you very much for coming on the show, Tim. Um, it was lovely to hear your views. And thank everything. you for having you know, me. Um, it was absolutely lovely to chat to you. Um, and I hope you continue to do everything you want to do in this passion and career, because you're absolutely right. It's not just for a laugh for us. It's what we want to do. It's not a hobby. So and you know what you. I feel really sorry for is guys like yourself who are just at the start of the, your careers and I will say, just don't give up. This is only an intermission. Hopefully, all being well. Hopefully, everything will be back again, probably in 2021. But just ride it out if you can. And just remember why you love it so much. Just ask yourself that day. You love it because whatever the I reason is, you get cake. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you, you so much. It's lovely to have you. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Have fun.
Alex Denniston. Hello, mate. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm pretty good, mate. I'm pretty good. Honestly, you made me really nervous now because I was expecting technical difficulties to jump in and for me to just have my big face on here talking about, you know, anything. And you're terrified. Anything. Terrified. I'm doing, guys, that's, that's the internet for you. It likes to wibble on my show sometimes. Uh, so how have you been, mate? What have you been doing? I've been all right. Uh, I have been trying to not drink. I've been running a lot, right. exercising a lot, watching a lot of films. But oh. that's about it. Nothing productive. I feel like pathetic not doing anything productive, but... No, you've, you've still you've got some stuff coming up. Um, yeah. like we said, you 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 run a, a film production company uh, called Blue Shoes, which I have a lovely yeah, little logo yeah. right here for anyone that wants to check it out. There you go. Oh, isn't that cute? That can look it up and they can like it and they can follow you. It's always fantastic. Do we need to update that a pair of brogues? Need a pair of like trainers or something now? Some Reebok classics yeah. maybe. Who, who wears brogues now? I, I say that. Matt wears brogues. Matt I wears brogues all the time. It was a direct insult at him. That's all it was. I love them to pieces. I love them shoes. <laughs> um, so, what exactly is Blue Shoes? Blue Shoes is a production company that I set up while doing my history masters at University of Manchester. I met two friends there and we did a documentary making course. And we were given a theme of migration and got to pick something in Manchester to film. And there's a little restaurant in the Northern Quarter called This and That, a little Indian place. And I've been going there since I was about eight. My dad took me there for the first time, perhaps my first football game, actually. And we filmed their story. So the owner, Ishmael, he came from South India, came over, got taught to cook by his uncles and aunties, set up a restaurant. And we sort of told the story about how him and his son run the place. And the film did really well. We got like 50 or 1,000 views on Facebook. And it did really well for our university course. And we ended up, in the UK and a little bit of Europe, um, showing it at film festivals and like short documentary stuff. And it did pretty well. So from there, we sort of just took off and have been making short films and bits of podcasts and stuff ever since. I've, I've obviously, um, when I do my research, because I don't have researchers for this like Graham Norton actually does, um, <laughs> I've obviously watched your videos as well as your, your new one coming out. And I have to say, I think it's fantastic on the documentary, doc drama kind of style that you do and what yeah, you do. Because from what I've seen of the two things that you've done mostly at the moment is like, it's a lot about the minorities of the world yeah. and what the hardships that some of them have gone through and what they're fighting for. And I think that's absolutely beautiful to show people because especially at this moment in time where we have things like Black Lives Matter and the movement of it all, because to me, this feels like a bit of a historical moment that we're going through with this kind of side of the movement. And the films that you do are showing things like that. They're showing things that people don't really see in day-to-day -day life. They're just, you're seeing stories that people don't really know about. And I think that that's amazing. So what, what kind of like inspired you to really go down that kind of route, apart from obviously this and that? Thanks, mate. Uh, well, it's more that I think the three of us have got sort of relatively similar like political ideology and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we all wanted to represent underrepresented voices. Like, you know, whether that's working class people, the North-South divide, Northern Irish people coming over to Britain, immigrants, asylum seekers, you know, we wanted to support the arts as well. So it was basically anything we saw in society that we think wasn't represented enough. So our first mm -hmm. one was our South Indian migrants and how they talked through the whole film of how they feel like Mancunians and how they feel like people have been curried together from all different backgrounds, no matter what gender or race or where they'd come from or anything. It didn't matter. It was that they were all coming together to eat, share food and get to know each other. And then it, same with our other project, we just started coming out, we released a trailer this week. Yes. about a Congolese asylum seeker in Manchester. And it's just about, it's trying to sort of raise awareness of people that aren't typically getting that, I don't know, getting their voice out there in mainstream media or are often misrepresented, you know? No, it's, it's great. And I'll be sharing the links to both of those videos for the audience uh, on my page after we finish the show, as well as Tim's um, stories for Dame as well, just in case anyone wants to check them out. Um, so when can we expect to see uh, Congo's film being released? So Congo's Activist in Exile uh, is the title of it, and we're hoping to release it later on this year and do a film festival run, the same thing we did with our first film. Um, so we'll see. The film is basically finished. It's just finding the right avenues to show it. That's, well, that's it good. Well, um, I'm sure everyone will check it out. I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Um, now, like I said, everyone gets a challenge. What's that going to be? And I thought for you, I'd do a bit different. Obviously, I do what people are talking about and stuff. 
but I thought I'd go a bit different with you and I've made it about your history degree. Um, I sent you a lovely message the other day asking if you learned British history and that helped me out a load because your challenge is called Kings and Queens. If I had some amazing technical skills, I would have had them up in my hands, that would be amazing. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you a few questions about Kings and Queens of the, the uh, British Empire. I actually think most of them are kings. I only mean, have one queen one. Um, and what's gonna happen is you've got to tell me what the answer is. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. This is my, I, brother. I, my brother's good at royal history. I'm not good at this stuff. <laughs> you sit there watching this going, I know what that is. What Literally, are you doing? sat downstairs screaming at his phone. So this will be good. So first question, who was the last English king to lead an army into battle? Ooh. Um, I am going to go for King Charles the first. Are you completely sure? All right, go on, go on, ruin me. It's wrong, isn't it? There is George the second. Yeah, George the second. I'm embarrassed. He's the last one to lead a, uh, an army into battle at the Battle of Dedingen uh, Dedingen in 1743. All right, I'm like, I'm like a hundred years. Old. This is terrible. Yeah, not even well. close. Not even close. This is not awful. Um. <laughs> Let me see question number two. Which English king had the longest reign? English king of the longest reign. Um, so I know the longest reigns of Victoria. No, no, it's not. It's Elizabeth II, then Victoria. Longest reign. I want to go for George V. George V. Oh, God. You, you, and you did this last time. I was like, was it Charles II last time? So I'm going to go to the fifth. Maybe this is wrong. Now. Your answer is George the Third. <sighs> 59 years and 96 days. I think I did and a quiz on this with like some friends about three, four weeks ago, and I can't remember that far. This is my history. Yeah. Knowledge is, that was history, and I forgot that as well. Well, you're the one that did a degree I did. So I, I, I would. Uh, yeah, okay. I could blame myself. Here's an easy one. Who is the first king of all England? Uh, I'm going to go for Alfred. Alfred? King Alfred, yeah. He claimed himself first king of England anyway. He was king of Wessex, then claimed himself first king of England. Are you sure it's going to go with Alfred? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get it wrong again. and I'm going to have a clean suit of incorrect answers on the challenge. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go for that. You're going to go with Alfred? It's actually Athelstan. <sighs> See? First king of the kings, man. 925 to 939. Shocking. See? I see. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, I, I, I was right to be afraid of the challenge. Who was the king when the Black Death came to Britain? You prepared for a another incorrect answer, because that's no. what you're gonna get out of me. Um who should I go for? I'm gonna go for If anyone knows in the audience, please put in the comments if you want. Yeah, someone in the audience, please. Like, my brother should be typing this now to help me out because I'm just embarrassing myself. Let's go Edward the first. This is probably way out, but I'm going Edward the first. Edward the first. Yeah. Would you like to see your answer? No. No, no I don't want to see. It's Edward the third. <sighs> you see, I'm getting the names almost right. So, You're getting the if I could do it on names alone, you're winning. Yeah, you're doing so yeah, well. I wouldn't get any marks on an essay or an exam, deservedly. But uh, no, I mean, you can't say your GCSE history still. Yeah. All right, oh, fun one. The last king to have a beard. Jesus. I'm gonna give um, you a clue. On this one. Um, it was the second to last king. Second to last king. So that's like, is that another George? I feel like it's another George. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's so many Georges. This is so many. Things. If I say George or Edward, it's like there's so many of them. It could be any of them. I'm gonna go George the sixth, or is it seventh? It's the sixth. 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 Where are sixth? Is it George the sixth, guys? Is it George the sixth? Your answer is George the fifth. George the fifth. I, I'm yeah. This is bad. This is bad. 
one day she's got to come back and hit me, and they're going to rescind my degree. They are. We rolled from 1910 to 1936. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my brother's going to enjoy destroying me on this. It's going to be. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was great to sit and chat to you. I will put all your stuff up on the page afterwards so people thank can tell what's going on. And it was lovely to see you. And thank you because you've been a great help. Thank you very much, mate. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. In a bit. Yes, if you guys want to check out anything that Alex and Tim have been doing, I'll be putting them up on the page after this so you can follow, have a look, have a laugh. You'll have a great time, trust me. Now, next up, as we've seen as of last week, I get a guest singer on every week, and this week is no different. We have a lovely guy on called Ben Johnson. He used to be my manager, and he's also a great friend of mine. He's a fantastic singer, and he's ready to pull out some stops and a feather boa. Uh, he is singing a song from Oliver and Company. It's fun. It's a bop. You'll have a great time. Please welcome to the stage... Ben Johnson. I think I'll leave you alone. Ben. Mm. <sighs> Girl. We've got work to do. Pass me the paint and glue. Perfect isn't easy, but it's me. When one knows the world is watching, one does what one must. Some minor adjustments, darling, not for my vanity, but for humanity, each little step of bold. And see how the breeding shows. Sometimes it's too much for even me. But when all the world says yes, then who am I to say no? Don't ask a mutt to strut like a show girl, no girl, you need a pro. Not a flea or a flaw, and take a peek at my paw. Perfection becomes me, but unrivaled, unruffled. I'm beauty unleashed, yeah, jaws drop, heart stops, so classic and classy, we're not talking lassie, and oh, 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 together now, oh, 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 oh. you were so cool, but man, you just weren't there. Though many covet my bone and bowl, they're barking up the wrong tree. You pretty pups all over the city, I have your hearts and you have my pity. Pretty is nice, but still, it's just pretty. Perfect, my dear, is me. Oh. Thank you very much, Ben! Oh, you much our lovely little show. Um, I hope you had a great time. Thank you very much for joining us. You've been a great help. Um, Nathan, if you want Ben to do things like that, you have to pay for his OnlyFans. So, thank you very much, everybody, and I'll see you later, Ben. Bye! Bye Thank you very much to Ben. That was great. I knew he was going to go something sultry and something musical theatre. It wouldn't be him if he didn't. Now, my next guest I have on is a lovely guy who I met in the past week who had me on his podcast talking about a lovely story that I did once, and we'll be talking about that later on as well. Um, his name is Christopher Bartlett Walford, if I can get that all out in one go. Oh, he gave me a thumbs up, so I've done it right. He's on to talk about his new talk show, Don't Call Me, We'll Call You. And he talks about some random things, which you're about to find out about. Please welcome to the show, Christopher. Hello, everybody. 
Hello, 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 hello. How are you? I am doing wine. Uh, fine, thank you very much. Oh yeah. The, um, if you no, leave I'm me back. to last, and there's a bottle of red wine in the fridge because it is a chilled summer red wine, I'm having a lovely time. How are you, Brandon? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing my show. I'm having a party. I wish I was having a wine. Um, you can, you can just come and get one. You know that is fine. Actually, I'd love to, um, but I. <laughs> <laughs> trying because I weighed myself and said I was 12 stone and Matt's only 11 and a half so yeah I wish I was 12 stone let's move on because that's a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> so Chris you do a lot in the industry you've done so many different things you've been on all together now as a as a judge there we go. just in case anyone has forgotten oh, what... I love it I can hear the theme tune already <laughs> um I know a few people have been on that actually um i mean I there were a hundred of us so you got a good chance <laughs> we all we all I pretty was, much knew each other uh, anyway so it's um, fine andy pierce yes i know andy lovely andy um, directed me in a show once uh for a stem line thing i was like oh i do know some, I know more people from this i'm gonna know all 100 of you soon i'll be like yes <laughs> you everyone <I> don't... <laughs> it was good um, it was good fun and and everyone got to know each other in the tiny space that we were held in <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> you also run an agency called Rigmarole Management with uh, a number of other agents, and which Sam, one of our guests from last week, is one of your clients, which was really Lovely amazing. Sam, happening. Um, and you also so run linked, so linked. We'll call you, which is a fantastic podcast where you guys talk about awful auditions, of which I have probably more stories to give you than the one I just give you. Um, so first things yes, first, please. yes, please. I, since you've done so much, what inspired you to get into the industry? I mean, if, if I'm perfectly honest, I'm Welsh. So music is uh, a massive part of our culture in Wales. And mm. it's just a natural thing. I'm not necessarily sporty. Um, I'm not the most academic person in regards to like sciences or anything. Music is just uh, where my, my skills lied from a very early age. Uh, so why not make a career out of it well no. because a global pandemic will shut it down that's why but that's yeah. why it's always a party um so then um that's actually a good lead into my next question um like I, i'm sure you see when i was talking to him i call it curtain down thanks to matt's mm. lovely interview gave it. i think that should be something we should trend hashtag curtain down because curtain down yeah going, you know? i think the thing is with, with the phrase curtain down it's it's quite final uh, Maybe intermission, should... I think. Intermission was a good idea. I think that's, oh, that's a good thing. Curtain down seems a little bit too final for me, but unfortunately, I think for some people, it's going to be curtain down. But um, so, how, how do we do need you help? This whole thing. Do, do you know what? I've had a really hard week this week. It's been very hard. Um, it's it's very tricky when you work uh, the agent side of of the business. Mm -hmm. When obviously there's lots of hope and, and, and positivity and passion for careers and, and we're there as agents to support our clients and work very hard for them um, and, and put them in the right doors and, you know, turn keys and things. But when those opportunities are just simply not there at the moment, it's very difficult to stay positive for everybody's sake. But the fact that we work with a wonderful group of clients who are incredibly talented and diverse and, and joyful and passionate for the industry even in a time like this that's what's mm -hmm. keeping me going and that's what's go you know keeping a lot of people going you know no one's earning any money at the moment that's fine but i think the love for the industry and the passion for theater and, and live music i'm not even just thinking about theater or plays or musicals i'm talking about any anyone who works in media anyone who works in television script writing comedians uh you know artists whether it's singer songwriters anything Anybody who watches any TV show, who listens to any piece of music, whether it's the radio, Spotify, their favourite album, if you have any type of media in your daily life, if you don't work in it, you should be screaming at the government to help it. Because if you don't, it will go away tomorrow. And some of it is going away tomorrow. Yeah. And we yeah. can't do anything else other than beg. Yeah. That, I mean, you're absolutely, and it's it's as much as it's awful that it's all happening. The one good thing that I have came, that has come out of it a bit is seeing how passionate the people in this industry are, how much we're willing yeah. to work for. I don't know if you've seen the pictures yet. I don't actually have one. I should have had one for the show. Um, there are, uh, if you've seen the pictures of the Royal Exchange at the moment, um, yeah. they have 
it over with the words theater, theater, theaters and a police tape over it. Just to Miss, people missing theater, I think, isn't it? Theater is missing yeah. or something. And it's a lot of different theaters around the country. The Nationals got it on it as well. There's lots of different art artistry based buildings and theaters that, yeah, I think it says theater is missing. And it's, it's, you know, I almost want to go on a little kind of walk with my son through the quiet streets of London to pass the theaters that I love and have worked in and, and, you know, mm -hmm. still work with just to kind of, it might bring a tear to my eye, but it, it's, you know, it reminds us that everybody within that building is is fighting for the same cause. And I tell you what, when it comes back, and it is a when, it might be a little different for a year or so, but it is a when, it's going to be the best feeling ever. Absolutely. And th that's the thing that you're seeing a lot of performers such as myself and you, who are people in this industry and are working hard to do something. We are not letting it die. And no. there are few let it die in any way. Yeah. There's and lots of great. avenues. There's lots of avenues for I hate the term the industry, but the industry to keep going, whether it's you tipping a songwriter that you like to to do a cover or something or, or do a performance for them and send them a video. That's great. It's donating to someone like the Barn Theatre, you know, or Mercury Theatre Colchester or, or Black Ticket Project and people who are putting their time and resources into bringing new people into theatre and new theatre to people. Do it if you can. That's great. A pound, two pound, 50 quid, whatever. Do it. Or... It's buying a ticket to an online concert. If that's the kind of concert that you would go to at somewhere like the other palace and, you know, the wonderful people at Lambert Jackson are doing great things uh, for online content and theater stuff, but buy a ticket. There's been loads of free theater. There's loads of stuff like that. That's great. But if you're watching it, chuck a couple of quid, even if it's a pound, a pound helps more than nothing. I'll put my PayPal on the side if anyone wants to chuck me a pound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so your podcast is called Don't Call Us, we'll call you. And yep. it's about awful auditions and chatting about what they are. Um, I first want to ask, what's your worst audition? Oh, mate, this, I've got too many. That's the problem. I I used to love auditions and I still do enjoy them. But my problem is that I, I talk a lot and I would always talk quite a lot. That was how my nerves um, manifested themselves. And now looking back, I, I acknowledge it was more than nerves. It was anxiety attacks kind of happening, just going Bleh. I once went in with a vocal group that I uh, worked with and we'd been called in for a, a new BBC uh, competition. It wasn't like X Factor. It was a, a, a vocal competition, which turned into pitch battle. So it was just a one-off, but it was based around harmony. Uh, we were an a cappella group. We went in, great three songs set in front of a panel of about 12 people, a lot of whom from the music industry that I really knew and really respected and, you know, mm -hmm knew who they were the lead producer um had a coffee cup it was a sunday evening it was about quarter to nine in the night we were the last people there so i knew they'd been there all day for some mm. reason <laughs> i i just went i bet that's alcohol in there out loud and she went no no it's a coffee i went yeah I bet it's alcohol and then for the next 20 minutes of the meeting just went how's your gin and you could see her just kind of crumbling and going going like this and just going this is not funny but my <laughs> i couldn't let it go i couldn't let it go, couldn't let it go. and we had a great we had a great time we didn't end up doing the show for a few reasons but i've i've since worked with that producer and, and she said don't worry i knew you were nervous but in that moment i basically called her an alcoholic in front of her peers and and my colleagues and oh god god uh, so yeah I, there's there's many 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 and and as you listen to to our podcast i i dip into a few of my own as well there's one that i was i was talking to uh, the wonderful kaylee mcknight uh who's been in les miserables tina bend it like beckham and she was just on the hugh jackman uh world tour she was our guest last week she brought a show um she brought a, a story about when she auditioned for seven brides for seven brothers when she was a lot younger first straight out of drama school and went into a dance call, which turned out to be a, a dance audition, like a full on ballet audition. Her story reminded me that that was my very first like big proper audition, but it was before I trained. It was when yeah. I was back in like sixth form age in Wales, I got called up to London to audition for the younger brother. I turned up in like Nike shorts and t-shirt and some trainers because that's what I always danced in, because I'm not a dancer. Walked into what now I know is Dance Attic, 
and there's like 50 six foot guys absolutely toned like all wearing super tight shorts that showed more than you think and i'm like i'm just a little teenager <laughs> yes that's the worst it was the worst but we've had some wonderful stories from everyone the whole point of our show is uh we we have listeners and and professional performers and not you know amateur performers as well everybody who has any kind of performance experience will have done an audition at some point yeah. and will have a story where it didn't go to plan some of them are wonderful really quick ones like um i, I forgot to put my glass there was a, a girl who emailed this week that said i didn't wear my glasses for an agent audition and ended up walking into the chair that was in the middle of the room twice and saying two of my sentences completely behind a pillar and i had no idea little one uh, brilliant there was a guy who texted us a story or emailed us a story and said um he was singing for a west end musical theater audition uh, for a big new show and went in and, and sang a song and the casting director was was down on his phone for the whole time he finished the audition just left called his agent straight away she went how did, how did it go he went well i don't think it went very well he was on his phone all and she went no i don't i know it didn't go very well because he texts me to say never sing that song in an audition again Oh my god, um, which is brutal. So we've got every week there's a couple of short ones like that, and then there's a couple of longer stories, um, like the one, and I can say it now that you emailed us with I did. which is uh, one I of know. my it's one of my favorite things I've ever ever read. It I because it's absolutely fine, it's it's great, it's not bad. Wow, but everything that you layered up and everything that happened to you on that day. You want to know? I something? genuinely was crying at the end of reading it to Kaylee. It was so funny. There's so much more to that story of how I even got oh, to God. You want to my stand up show? You will hear the whole story and you'll go, What a day you had. What a day. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, I auditioned once for The Wizard of Oz uh, for the role of Toto. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I, can't. I know the story, I can't stop laughing. <laughs> Um, fetch with a pencil case with Dorothy. Uh, did a bit of a singing, <laughs> um, and it what makes it worse. I kept forgetting my words in the singing portion of it, so I was like, Great, but it made sense because I did the song I Love Play Rehearsal. So every time I came to it, I'd go, I love play rehearsal, and they go, Because it's, the, it's the best. And you know what's worse? That's like one of my audition songs now, and I still sing it. I'm like, oh, you can't do that. Uh, But in the end, uh, the role went to an actual canine, an actual dog. So, um, oh, I can't was, believe it. You didn't even not you didn't even not get the job to someone who looked like you, your friend, your worst enemy. You they gave it to a dog. They give it to a dog. They give it to a dog. It's a I can't. I can't. It's it's like you going in for Grisabella in cats and then giving it to the tiger from Tiger King. It's ridiculous. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean if, if I mean if Judy Dench can turn around and say <sighs> she's in cats, I Ooh. think you're fine. <laughs> The reason, the reason that we launched our show uh, during lockdown, we've been planning it for about a year and we were kind of collating stories and, and working behind mm -hmm. the scenes on, on everything. Theatre and performing arts and recording arts and live arts and, and TV and everything is in such a dire state at the moment. Every time we land ourselves on social media, whether it's to flick through Instagram and, and check on our friends or, you know, open WhatsApp, it's just full of sadness and despair and oh, yeah. genuine heartbreak for the world that we've created, the careers that we've curated for ourselves over the last however many years, 15 in my case, that we all need to remind ourselves that it's okay when things go wrong and actually when we're back to normal, auditions are still gonna not go to plan. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a fantastic idea. For anyone that does want to check out, I'll be putting it on the page as well. I've done mm. Alice will call you. Please give it a listen. It's absolutely hilarious. Of actors who auditions are awful. And if you do want to get in contact with your story, you can contact Chris on what's the email again? It's don't call us pod at gmail.com. And this week, uh, if you need to listen to the show and you haven't before, please, hey, please do. This week's episode with the wonderful Michelle Payne, who works with the Mercury Theatre Colchester and is the artistic director of Casper Arts. These are wonderful things. Good training there. Um, there's a story in there which is 
A, horrific. And if you have one that's better than that, I want to hear it. Every story is anonymous. I won't reveal your name unless you want me to, because uh, Brandon's uh, lifted the lid on his. <laughs> I won't tell you what, I won't tell people what the production was unless you want me to. So you, there's complete uh, anonymity. I'm with Sam listening to the podcast going, so there's a podcast and I swear to God, your story that you told me once yeah. on it's me it's me he messaged me and said i think that's my friends i said it is your friend <laughs> it is. i speak to him <laughs> uh, yeah. so your actual uh challenge i've got for you oh i'm uh, so terrified i'm so scared all you have to do is tell me true or false oh did God. these options happen or did they not okay, okay okay are they all yours no okay okay um no they're not uh so number one before acting professionally I auditioned for Taming of the Shrew in school. It said, prepare a scene. And I thought that meant like a meal. So I wrote my own Shakespeare monologue. <laughs> no, that can't be real. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it. That's ridiculous. <laughs> well, okay, I, I once auditioned for Sherlock Holmes and went in full get up and wear only to find out they were casting for Mrs. Hudson. Oh, well, I mean, I want that to be true. I don't think it is, but I want it to be true. <laughs> it's a, it's not true. It's, it's not true. No, it can't be true. Because it. That would have gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> um, number three, I once auditioned for a commercial and ate every biscuit they give me instead of taking small bites. Oh, I mean, I would do that. So that's got to be true. <laughs> It is true. It's Alice. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I mean, that's oh, perfect. It, that's it, genuinely it, brilliant. It, are a chunky version apparently because she couldn't say the name and if you can guess from that that she was eating four of them and she has diabetes so it was amazing well she's, she's got diabetes now <laughs> no, she had it before she was all oh, right okay one. okay um and your last one i once auditioned for peter rabbit live and brought a real rabbit with me to show them how animal friendly i am well again that's the kind of thing that i probably would have done so i think that's a true because it's not true that's not true <laughs> i mean of course it's not true but i can the thing is i have seen people take their dogs to auditions and to leave them outside oh, yeah. having happening. done having done six or seven years of casting uh predominantly in the world of children's theater as well um it's a lot of personalities that work in children's theater i the the, the i won't say the worst audition but the most memorable audition that somebody came and auditioned for me there was a a, a young lady because she she was maybe about 30 um she i was running at the time my wife and, and a, a colleague of ours was was on the the panel were casting so i i brought the girl in let's let's call her emily um which wasn't her name and she, but i said hello everyone this is and before i could introduce her she just went yes i know i'm old and i i, I first of all not old second of all age was irrelevant for this but she wasn't and we were like uh, uh hello nice to meet you <laughs> carried on uh, and uh, so we said what's your what's your song what are you going to sing to us we needed we needed a pop ballad so yeah. she said Whitney Houston I will always love you brilliant absolutely brilliant as a great for what we needed great choice she proceeded to walk over put her lips against the wall on the side of the audition room yeah. and I don't, don't mean near them I mean literally like kissing the wall and sang the whole song like, if I could stay, I would only be in your way for the whole song. And the three of us were just sat there like, um, what? <laughs> we, we couldn't stop her. She finished, walked out. That was it. Didn't even say anything. Just walked out. She must have been having a bad day and that's fine. But it was one of the most confusing 10 minutes of my life. Yeah. So we all see that, right? All of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that's that happened, didn't it? That happened. That happened. There was another guy who came in, and he um he he was being a pirate. I think it was for a, a production of Peter Pan. Decided he'd come in full character, which was absolutely brilliant, a really bold but very good choice. Decided halfway through his song, which was Lady Gaga, Edge of Glory, he'd jump up onto the table that our casting equipment and stuff was on that we were sat behind, but the table broke in two. <laughs> So he jumped up, singing, I'm on the edge of glory, jump, crack, split. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Like, it went with that bang. Like that. You've never seen a death drop like it. Wow. 
he got the job. Oh, he is him. He got the job. He got the job. Got the job. <laughs> and a bill. I my laptop. <laughs> so. Um, well, thank you very much for coming on. Funny enough, uh, this show actually came from a bad audition, uh, the name of it, because I once auditioned for a thing called Dinosaurs in the Wild and had dim it. Sat outside, had some, uh, they went, oh, we'll, we'll let you know in a minute. He's tapping the shoulder. Thanks. You've been a great help. And I was like, oh. what oh. made it better was two weeks later, I'm working with Ben, funny enough, he was on singing tonight, and in walked the director. And he was like, oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. Oh, I'm doing this show. You should have auditioned. And they're like, I did. I did. For him then to sit and pander to me all night. And at the end of the night, Ben, my godsend of a man, give him his bill and his last drink and went, you've been a great help. Oh, so perfect. it was the basis of my life. No. It was gorgeous. Chef's kiss. Um, Mike's so drop. To end that, thank you very much for coming on the show because you've been a great help by coming on. I will be sharing your stuff on the page, let people know what's happening, and it's been lovely chatting to you. Nice to see you, Brandon. Have a lovely evening. Bye, everybody. Hello, bye. Yes, I will be putting everyone's stuff on the page in the next half hour. Please do check it out if you so wish. The show has ran on tonight, the normal, but we've had some technical difficulties and we've had some amazing stories with people talking about what they wanted to talk about and they're absolutely right to. So I don't really care. But I'm off now to eat my dinner because I haven't had a home-cooked meal from my mother in about seven years. So I'll see you all later. Bye.